Spørgsmålet om fredsprocessen kaster stærke følelser af sig. En af de stemmer, som i de seneste par år har markeret sig skarpest i kritikken af Israel, er den internationalt kendte amerikanske politolog og forfatter Norman Finkelstein. Han er søn af to polske jøder, der overlevede nazisternes udryddelseslejre. Men Norman Finkelstein selv mener, at Israel og flere amerikanske jødiske organisationer misbruger holocaust i politisk øje med, og han betegner Israel som en slyngelstat. Sidste år blev den kontroversielle amerikaner forbudt indrejse i Israel i 10 år under henvisning til, at han sympatiserer med Hisbollah-bevægelsen i Libanon. Tidligere på dagen havde vi besøg her i studiet af Norman Finkelstein, og jeg startede med at spørge ham om, hvorfor han ikke tror på den israelske regerings hensigter, når den erklærer at vil arbejde for en fredelig løsning i Mellemøsten. Well, because any talks or any resolution of the conflict has to be based on international law, and the law is clear. There is a tenet, a basic principle of international law, that it's inadmissible to acquire territory by war. Israel acquired the Golan Heights in the course of the June 1967 war, and therefore under international law it has no title to any of the Golan Heights. There has to be a full Israeli withdrawal to the pre-June 4, 1967 border. That's a precondition. You can't resolve any conflict unless there are basic principles, and the principles for resolving the Israel-Palestine conflict or Israel-Syria conflict has to be international law. Just a couple of days ago, Israel's Deputy Foreign Minister Danny Ayalon paid a visit to our studio. Mm. Just listen to what he said. It's coming right up. Hamas is the real enemy of peace. Hamas is enemy of the Palestinian interest. By the way, Hamas does not represent Palestinian interest, but Iranian interest. They are being helped and supplied and financed and equipped by Iran with the same ideology of Sharia, you know, of a very... Uh, Um, very radical Islamist uh, entity. It's pretty clear what he's saying. The onus rests with Hamas, or Hamas as he calls it. What's mm. your take on this? Well, it's not as if Hamas has been around since eternity. The Israelis had the uh, option of settling the conflict with the Palestinians before January 2006 when Hamas was elected into office. If Hamas is the obstacle, And why weren't they able to sell the conflict before Hamas was elected into office? Because they refused the terms of the international community. Every year, as it happens in November this month, the international community votes on a resolution <clears> at <throat> the United Nations General Assembly to sell the conflict. And every year, the vote is the same. The whole world on one side, 161 nations last year, And then there are the United States, Israel, Nauru, Palau, the Marshall Islands, Micronesia, and sometimes Australia on the other side. The problem is not Hamas. Hamas has repeatedly said that it's willing to settle the conflict in the June 67 border. But still they refuse to recognize the state of Israel. Well, they refuse to recognize what they call the legitimacy of the state of Israel. But under international law, they're not obliged to recognize the legitimacy of the state of Israel. If you go back, for example, 1947, uh, Gandhi said he'll accept the reality of Pakistan, but he would never accept the legitimacy of the state of Pakistan. But And the, 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 uh, Hamas is not, ex ha ha is not expected to be held to a higher level of diplomacy than Gandhi. Gandhi said, Pakistan is a reality which I'm forced to accept but I don't accept it as legitimate. And that's the same position of Hamas. They said, well, settle the conflict in the June 67 border. But things then, this is what makes Jerusalem unwary of Hamas, because they keep well, saying, how can we have a neighbor which doesn't recognize our legitimacy? Yeah, but you see, the problem is, listen to your own language. You're just spouting Israeli propaganda. Why are you saying Jerusalem? East Jerusalem is occupied Palestinian territory under international law. That was the ruling of the International Court of Justice in July 2004. And if you look at the Goldstone report that just came out a month ago, they refer to East Jerusalem as occupied Palestinian territory. But now you've given over Jerusalem to the Israelis. You're just repeating Israeli propaganda. They have no title under international law to East Jerusalem. But speaking of what you call my Israeli propaganda, mm -hmm. which I'll refute, but anyway, uh, you're on record for saying that Israel is a terrorist state, that it's a mm -hmm. lunatic state. I saw that in mm -hmm. the Turkish English language daily, uh, today's Saman. Mm -hmm. don't know if they quote you correctly, but anyway, uh, why mm -hmm. do you use such stark language about a state which is essentially mm -hmm. just defending its own right to exist? 
Okay, you accuse me of using stark and provocative language. So let's take the, international, the renowned international jurist, uh, Richard Goldstone, the person who was the chief prosecutor for the war crimes in Rwanda and war crimes in Yugoslavia. And he came out a few weeks ago uh, with a report on the, uh, what Israel did in Gaza approximately a year ago. And he said, and now I'm quoting him, he said the purpose of what Israel did was to, quote, punish, humiliate, and terrorize a civilian population. Terrorize a civilian population. So is Mr. Goldstone also guilty of incendiary language, or is he simply accurately reporting what happened? Mm -hmm. Terrorism is a fact. And a terrorism refers to the targeting of civilians and civilian, civilian populations and civilian infrastructure to achieve a political end. And Israel routinely targets civilians and civilian infrastructure to achieve political goals. So oh, it's, no, it's terrorism. Terror state, what you're well, saying. it's terrorism. Mm. I mean, I, I, I can't help it if that's what Israel chooses as its targets. Can I ask you, do you think that the... If Israel chose military uh, uh, combatants and military infrastructure, then it wouldn't be a terrorist state, but that's not what it chooses to do. Terrorist state or self-defense, you know, it depends on the eye that looks at no, it. No, even if you're engaging in self-defense, let's say, let's say, for argument's sake, for argument's sake, Israel were engaged in a war in self-defense in Gaza, for argument's sake. That still means you can engage in terrorism, you can be engaged in a war of self-defense, but if in the course of the war you're targeting civilians and civilian infrastructure, then you're engaged in terrorism. That's the basic distinction in international law between the reason why you went to war and how you're conducting the war. Now, you may have what, what gone... Think, so, sorry for interrupting, but when you raise these issues, what do you think the international community should do about Israel? How should there, the case of Israel be handled? There's a very simple way to handle it. They should enforce the law. I mean, that I think is uh, the easiest and the most efficacious way to resolve the so conflict. So Israel is being granted there, special there, treatment, you're saying? Yes, the, the law is not being enforced against it. Uh, right now, Richard Goldstone is saying Israel committed war crimes and, crime, and possible crimes against humanity. Mm. And Israel should be brought before the International Criminal Court if those who are guilty of those crimes are not prosecuted. Just enforce the law. These are not radical ideas. You know, sometimes people attribute to me that I'm some, sort of, some sort of radical. I'm simply saying let's apply the conventional, the conventional customary rules of law uh, <clears throat> and laws of war uh, to Israel and hold it to account the same as we would any other state. But you are very radical in your criticism of Israel. In, the longer, in, the, in, the, in the longer run, what do you think should happen to the political and geographical entity mm. known as the State of Israel? Should it be I, dissolved, uh, you think? First of all, it's, I'm, I'm not discussing my opinion. I'm discussing uh, and what I try to put forth is what the international community has resolved on. But I'm asking your the, opinion about I, Israel's I, future. I, 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 my opinion, honestly, it's not a claim of false humility, but I, uh, my opinion I don't consider it to be important. If I were an important moral authority or a moral voice, if I were a Nelson Mandela or a Mahatma Gandhi or a uh, Bishop Tutu, yeah, I would say my opinion is important. But I'm just a fellow who's done some you know, research uh, from Brooklyn, New York. I don't claim to any great moral authority. And I'm simply saying that based on the research, it's pretty clear that the problem with the conflict is that the international community does not held, hold Israel to basic principles of law uh, and the laws of war as it would to any other state. And that's the problem. Professor Finkelstein, thank you very much for being with us. Thank you.